Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and this is the second part in a two-part video series on building Mimic panels using Arduinos. In the first part, we used the Mimic panel that worked alongside JMRI and computer control. In this second part, we'll create a Mimic panel for a layout that doesn't use JMRI or any computer control. We're still using an Arduino to read inputs and control outputs and the setup is very similar, but this time the panel will be completely standalone. And because we're not using JMRI, which did quite a bit of work in the background for us, it means there's going to be a bit more programming to get this working. Don't worry if you're not great at coding, neither am I, so we're going to keep this as simple as possible and hopefully you can follow along. Before we start, a few people have asked me recently if there's a way they can contribute financially to the channel, and there wasn't really, until now. YouTube have just introduced a feature called Super Thanks. There's a button just below the video that you click and there are amounts to choose from, and you'll get an animated comment which lets everyone know that you're awesome. There's absolutely no pressure to contribute, but the button is there if you'd like to use it, and any Super Thanks will be very much appreciated as it helps to buy the electronics and the camera equipment. If you'd like to support the channel in a totally free way, then please hit the subscribe button, which again, I really appreciate. And if you find this video useful, then please give it a like. Affiliate links to all the components used in the project are in the description below. And if you buy using these links, then you still get the same price, but the channel gets a small share of the sale. Okay, let's get started. So this is what we built in the first video, a mimic panel that lights up to show the position of the train as it moved from block to block. We've got a button that allowed us to change the position of the point, and we've got a couple of LEDs that show what position the point is in. JMRI was running in the background doing most of the work for us, and we spent the majority of that video looking at the JMRI side of things. In this video, we'll start from scratch, spending more time looking at the electronics and the Arduino programming and we're going to make a few changes and improvements. We're still using my basic test layout, which is separated into three blocks, which are electrically isolated from each other using insulated plastic rail joiners. We've got this track on the left leading up to the point as our first block, then we've got the point and the track on the right as our second block, and then we've got the siding as our third block. Each block has its own power supply, and I'm going to be using a Hornby Select digital controller to power my layout this time. Attached to the power supply for each block, we have these Merg block occupancy current sensors. Connected to the point, we have a servo point motor and attached to the servo mount, we've got the micro switch that provides feedback on the position of the servo. I've got my badly drawn diagram of the layout here and my breadboard that I'm going to use to hold my components, just like before. I've got a five volt power supply here and we've got three blue LEDs for the block occupancy and two green LEDs for the point position indicators. I've got my PCA9685 servo driver board, and this brings us on to the first change from the previous video. In part one, we connected the LEDs to the output from the Arduino. This worked fine, but it meant we needed to be careful that we didn't overload the current draw, and to protect the LEDs, we needed a current limiting resistor for each one. This time, we're going to connect the LEDs to the output from the PCA9685, which means we no longer need resistors and we don't need to worry about the current draw. Another change is the button that we'll be using to change the position of the point. Previously, we've used this momentary push to make switch. We use this because the point could be controlled from the panel, but also from the computer. This time, the point can only be controlled from the panel, so we can use a two position switch. So I'm going to use this Hornby point lever. The final change is a big one. Previously, we used an Arduino Mega with a sensor shield on top. I use this just because I tend to do most of my projects on here, but it's total overkill for a panel this size, so we're going to change to an Arduino Nano instead. Right, let's get this thing built. I'm building on the breadboard with this scrappy bit of paper for the demo, but if this was the panel for your layout, maybe use a nice piece of wood or perspex. We'll start by getting the LEDs in position. To keep things consistent, we'll have the longer anode positive legs at the top and the shorter cathode negative legs at the bottom. Then we can plug our Arduino Nano down here. I'm going directly into the breadboard, but you can get these holders which are quite useful because they've got screw mounts and screw terminals rather than pins. We'll have these two rows as connectors down here as our 5 volt rails, again positive on top and negative or ground along the bottom, but I'm not going to plug this in just yet. Now let's connect up the PCA9685. Pin A5 on the Arduino goes to SCL on the PCA9685. 
and pin A4 on the Arduino goes to SDA on the PCA9685. Then we connect ground on the PCA9685 to our ground over here, and we'll connect the 5V supply and the VCC to the 5V supply over here. And we may as well plug our servo into the first set of pins labelled 0. Now's a good time to head over to our sketch and put in the bits needed for the PCA9685. So first of all we need to include a couple of libraries and you might need to download these if you haven't already got them. I've covered how to install these in my previous videos on servo point motors. We need wire.h and the Adafruit servo driver header file. Now we need to set the address of the board. Doing it this way it sets the default address of 0x40 and you only need to set specific addresses if you're using multiple PCA9685 boards. I've made a video on connecting multiple boards together and addressing them if you wanted to go check that out. And down here we want to start the communication with the PCA9685 and set the frequency. I'm using 50 Hz because we have a servo connected and it needs 50 Hz, but we might find that at this low frequency the LEDs start to flicker a bit. If you were building a mimic panel then you probably wouldn't have servos and LEDs on the same board so you could use a higher frequency to stop that flickering. Whilst we're in the sketch we can set up some inputs for our block occupancy current sensors as we'll be connecting them next. So we'll go into the setup section and set the pin mode of digital pin 5 to be an input using the Arduino's internal pull-up resistor. Don't worry too much about what the pull-up bit does, but it basically ensures a known state for the digital signal. This is going to be for our left block. And we'll repeat this another two times for our right block and siding block, which will be on pin 6 and 7. So now let's go back to the electronics and connect up the block occupancy current sensors. Each sensor needs a 5V supply and to be connected to ground, so let's do that first. Then we need to connect the left block signal to pin 5, the right block signal to pin 6, and the siding block signal to pin 7. And now let's connect up the LEDs. We need to connect the positive legs of the LEDs to the signal output pins on the PCA9685 and the negative leg of the LED to ground. We'll have the LED for the left block on the second set of pins labelled 1 and the LED for the right block on the third set of pins labelled 2 and the siding block LED connected to the pins labelled 3. The LED which will show that the point is closed can be on set of pins labelled 4 and the LED that shows if the point is thrown can be on set of pins labelled 5. That's all of our LEDs connected up so let's go back into the sketch and write the code that links the block occupancy sensors to the LEDs. We'll set this up in the main loop section and we'll make sure we comment our code clearly so we know what's happening when we come back and look at this again. So starting with the left block, we want it so that if the left block sensor detects a train then it turns on the corresponding LED, otherwise the LED is off. For this we need an if statement that reads the signal on digital bin 5, which is the input for the left block sensor, and checks the value. Because we're using pull up resistors the pin will be showing a 0 if a train is detected and a 1 if there's no train. So we'll check to see if the signal is 0 and if it is then we want to turn on the LED using this piece of code. And this is telling the LED connected to set of pins labelled 1 on the PCA9685 to be full brightness. If you didn't want full brightness then you can lower this number. Now we need to say what to do if no train is detected using an else statement. So we put else, open a curly set of brackets and using that right microseconds code again we set the LED brightness to 0. Now we need to repeat this for the right block so we can copy that code and update it for the correct connections so the right block sensor is on pin 6 and the output LED is on PCA9685 pin 2. And again we copy this for the siding block, the sensor is on pin 7 and the LED is on PCA9685 pin 3. And we can check that we've not made any mistakes here by clicking the verify button at the top. 
So that all looks good. Let's go back to the electronics and connect our two switches. Let's start with the lever switch to throw the point. We'll connect ground to the side terminal here and we'll connect this terminal to digital pin 8 on the Arduino. Then we've got the micro switch on the servo mount. The central terminal goes to ground and the lower terminal goes to digital pin 9 on the Arduino. That's the electronics finished, so back to the sketch to set the switches up. First we need two new inputs. So we've got pin 8 for the points lever switch and pin 9 for the feedback micro switch. Now let's write the code that changes the position of the point. So down in the main loop we need another if-else statement. If the signal on pin 8 is a 1, then I know I need to write this value to set the servo position. Else the servo needs to be in the position corresponding to this value. I basically experimented with servo positions to get these two values, and if you want more information about how to calibrate servo positions and get these values then check out my video on servo point motors. Finally, we need to write the code for the point position LEDs, which is based on the signal from the micro switch. Again, we need an if-else statement. So if the signal on digital pin 9 is a 1, then we want to fully turn on the LED on PCA9685 set of pins 4 and turn off the LED on set of pins number 5. Else, we want to do the opposite, so turn off the LED on set of pins number 4 and turn on the LED on set of pins labelled 5. And that's the coding done using basic if-else statements. Let's temporarily remove the Nano from the project, connect a USB cable and upload the sketch. Once uploaded, disconnect the USB and drop the Arduino back into the project. The Nano won't be connected to a USB cable, so the final thing we need to do is give it a power supply. So we'll connect the 5 volt supply to the V-in pin and the ground to the ground pin. Let's connect up our 5 volt power supply and see what happens. We should be able to control our point using the lever. I'll turn on the Hornby Select now and drop this locomotive onto the track and we should see an occupancy LED light up. Now let's move forward and as we cross the insulated rail joiners the LED for the left block should go off and the right block comes on. Let's change our point. So the indicator for the point has changed. Let's reverse into the siding so the right block LED should go off and the siding LED should come on. So that all seems to be working really well. So there we go, a panel that's totally standalone. Hopefully you can see how easy it would be to expand this to include more blocks, points and LEDs. That's all for this video. If you found it useful then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.